Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, two-way verbs again, uh, specifically with this presentation on how to use two-way verbs to describe placement or uh, placing objects. Uh, you'll recall that uh, there are two different types of two-way uh, two verbs, uh, some that take uh, a dative and some that take an accusative, um, depending upon whether position is described or motion or placement. Um, we're going to be looking at the ones that take accusative objects today. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a review of those two-way verbs, uh, then go over to a uh, quick review of two-way prepositions to secure that concept again before diving into how to use uh, what I call two-way verbs to uh, describe the placement of objects. So you'll recall that uh, there are two different types of two-way verbs. They have accusative forms and dative forms. The accusative on the left hand side of the screen, hängen, legen, setzen, stecken, and stellen, which we're going to look at today, uh, describe placement or how you place an object. So it implies motion. Uh, whereas dative on the right hand side of the screen uh, describes, posi uh, describes position or where objects are located. Uh, generally, the forms are similar, uh, although. There are three differences. Legen goes to liegen, setzen goes to sitzen, and stellen goes to stehen. So, the two-way verbs, the accusative forms that we're going to look at today are hängen, which means to hang, so hanging an object on a uh, vertical surface. Legen, which means to lay or place, so placing an object that lays flat on a horizontal surface. Setzen, to set an object, uh, essentially an object that sits, to place an object that sits onto a horizontal surface. Stecken, to put or insert, so inserting something uh, into your pocket or into a drawer, for instance. And then finally, stellen, uh, to stand or place, so an object that stands by itself, uh, setting it, uh, positioning it, setting it down, placing it so that it stands by itself. You would use stellen. So those are the five two-way verbs that take the accusative. So the question is, well, when do I use these forms of the verb? And it re requires us to step back for a second and say, well, am I describing a motion or am I describing a position? So let's go take a quick look at two-way prepositions and return to the example of Frau Schmidt. So this slide right here, I'm looking at Frau Schmidt and I'm asking, wohin geht Frau Schmidt? So, where is she going? Uh, motion away from the speaker. So, uh, which imply, which is implied by wohin. Um, so, since I'm talking about motion, uh, motion is the primary. Uh, I'm asking about where she's going, not where she's located. So, since I'm worried about motion, where she's going, uh, I'm going to answer in the accusative. Sie geht in die Bäckerei. In die Bäckerei. Um, in is a two-way preposition, takes either dative or accusative. Here it takes accusative because it answers the question, where is Frau Schmidt going? Now you can take, take this and compare it to the next slide, which deals specifically with where is Frau Schmidt. So the question is, wo ist Frau Schmidt? I'm not interested anymore in where she is going. Rather, I'm interested in where is she at. So since I'm interested in where is she at, I'm really interested in her position. Now anytime I use position and a two-way preposition, I will answer in the dative. And here I answer, sie ist in der Bäckerei. She is located inside the bakery. She's not moving into the bakery. She's already there. So she's standing, waiting, uh, inside of the bakery. So, for a review, if I show motion, I'm going to be using the accusative. If I show position, I'm going to be using the dative. Now, this is the same thing with these verbs of placement. Anytime I use one of these five verbs, and I'm using it to show uh, motion, to show movement, to show uh, me placing something, uh, I'm going to be using it in the accusative. So hängen, legen, setzen, stecken, stellen. Anytime I use one of those verbs, 
in conjunction with any one of those two-way prepositions that we've looked at, an, auf, hinter, im, in, neben, über, unter, vor, und zwischen, um, I'm going to use the accusative. So let's take a look at a slide to sort of clarify how this works. So I'm going to return again to Frau Schmidt. Now, Frau Schmidt is, in this instance, she's not doing something herself, but she's rather doing something to an object. So the question is, wohin stellt Frau Schmidt die Tasse? So where is Frau Schmidt uh, placing or standing the cup? Um, I'm interested in the act of motion here. I'm interested in how, I want to know where is she standing this cup? There's this motion indicated, the cup is in her hand, she's placing it somewhere onto a table. So the act of placement, the act of moving this cup requires an answer in the data, uh, excuse me, answer in the accusative. So wohin, where, stellt, the verb, Frau Schmidt, die Tasse. Now die Tasse here is an accusative object. It receives the action of Frau Schmidt placing it, so it's going to be a direct accusative object. Now, the other accusative component in the answer is sie stellt die Tasse auf den Tisch. She places the cup onto the table. Now, we know it's der Tisch, but since Frau Schmidt is placing the cup onto the table, I want to show that motion of it being placed onto the table. Therefore, I'm going to use auf in an accusative sense, it'll be auf den. So der Tisch goes to den Tisch. Auf den Tisch. Now die Tasse is still going to be accusative, but that's only because it receives the action of the verb, stellen. Um, auf den Tisch is going to be an accusative uh, two-way prepositional phrase. Uh, placing the cup onto the table. All right, so two-way verbs with placement.